Hello. Thank you for coming to our talk. I hope you're enjoying the online version of the web conference this year. Today, I'd like to present a new rating system we have for larger scale competitions. We call it ELO MMR. Now, let's start with some history for context. So you might be familiar with chess ratings. ELO pioneered these, and these ratings were defined on an interval scale, meaning that the, we predict the probability of one player beating another by a function of the difference between their two ratings. So these ratings are real numbers, and to compute them, what we do is when two players compete against each other, so here for example we have, if you've seen the Queen's Gambit, uh, we have these players Harry and Beth playing against one another, and the more surprising the outcome of their match, the, the bigger the resulting rating updates. And of course, uh, the winner always gains rating and the loser will lose an equal and opposite amount of rating points. So here, Harry is a very strong established player with a rating of 2150 and Beth is relatively a newcomer. So she starts with, let's say, a default rating of 1200. And so, um, well, let's say in this case, Beth is a prodigy, she wins, even though um, nobody expected it. And so from the system's perspective, this is very surprising because her rating was much lower. And because it's surprising, she gets a very substantial increase to her rating uh, when this match concludes. And Harry, therefore, gets a correspondingly large decrease in his rating. Now, um, well, there's a problem here, because um, Beth is not actually a bad player. She just has a low rating because she's never competed in an official setting before. And maybe we don't want experienced players like Harry to be completely terrified of playing newcomers for fear of completely losing their rating. And indeed, we know Harry's good, you know, we should, so maybe he shouldn't lose too many points. Um, and so uh, Glickman improved this rating system by putting it on firm mathematical Bayesian foundations. And without going into too much detail, uh, the main idea is that in addition to this rating mu, there is now an uncertainty sigma in each player's, uh, associated with each player's rating. So here, Harry is not only highly rated, but he's an established player, which means we know he's good, so there's very low uncertainty. Whereas Beth, the newcomer, has a very high uncertainty. What this means, essentially, is that this match is highly informative for Beth. You know, when she beats this player who is known to be good, she should get a large boost. On the other hand, from Harry's perspective, this match is very uninformative because Beth's true skill is very uncertain. So Harry actually gets a relatively minor adjustment. Still loses points, but not as many. Okay, so that's all well and good in one against one games such as chess. But what about settings beyond that, larger competitions? There have been many ad hoc extensions suggested over the years, um, as well as, um, and, and here we're talking about not just one team against one team, but we care about, you know, potentially free for all competitions too. And so most of these ad hoc extensions, you know, they're not really well principled mathematically. Uh, one exception and a very notable one is Microsoft's true skill algorithm. This rating system has actually been applied on the Xbox Live platform on a variety of very popular video games such as the Halo series with tens of millions of units sold. So this is actually used quite a lot in the industry. Um, but the question is, how well do these systems work? Well, as I mentioned, a lot of these systems are ad hoc, so their math isn't actually valid beyond the 1v1 setting. And so those systems do sacrifice some accuracy as a result. True skill is more principled, but the derivation and the computations are extremely complicated, which makes it virtually impossible to prove anything about them. And in practice, we've actually found that true skill, you know, while it works for medium sized video games, say with eight or 16 players, it doesn't seem to scale to games with, say, hundreds of 
ranked players in the same event or even thousands. So um, then we might look at the top quarter system. Top quarter is notable in that it's the math is somewhat well principled and it's also applied to online programming competitions where there are potentially thousands of players competing together. However, the top quarter system has a major flaw, which is that it's not incentive compatible. Um, and that's a game theory term, but just to kind of briefly motivate this, um, the ratings, well, ratings have many purposes. You know, they can be used to help with training programs, to help you track your skill, etc., for fans to look at who the best players are. But one of their purposes is to kind of motivate players to win. Um, and a bad rating system could kind of have the opposite effect. So there was an exploit found where, well, it's known now that the Glico 2 and Top Quarter systems are not incentive compatible. The exploit was found in the Pokemon Go's uh, Battle League video game. So here, by losing matches on purpose, players were actually able to obtain ratings considerably above what they would ever naturally obtain. Um, and of course, you know, you really don't want players losing on purpose and you don't want the players who do this to be the ones with the top ratings. It, it really reduces engagement in your game. Uh, it makes the rating system less trustworthy. So this is potentially a major problem. And in Pokemon Go, it is a major problem. In Top Coder, it wasn't yet clear just how bad the issue is. For all we knew, maybe the Top Coder system is almost incentive compatible, and maybe that would be okay in practice. Um, we wanted to know. So we actually investigated this. We applied the same exploit that was used um, on in Pokemon Go, or we actually enhanced it, sliced, enhanced it slightly. And um, we found that actually, no, Top Coder is also very severely non-incentive compatible. We were able to game the system and produce a massive increase in rating. Um, so this is the graph for or, uh, the top coder system. Um, now to, on the right, just as a preview of our rating system, ELO MMR, you can see that if we try to apply the same attack, there's no advantage. In fact, it's better to just play honestly all the time. Now, of course, this is just one possible attack. You might wonder whether our system can suffer from a different kind of attack. But in fact, we will prove that, no, there is no attack against ELO MMR. It is, the system is provably incentive compatible. Okay, so for the remaining half of the talk, we'll just briefly describe the setting in which the system applies. Uh, we'll give a little overview of the model without going too deeply into the math. Uh, please see the paper if you're interested in that. And then we'll kind of talk about the theoretical properties and demonstrate kind of show what we found empirically as well okay so the setting we care about are as i said large ranked competitions so these include programming contests a ballroom dance competitions uh, there's races that are competitive with the obstacles or rock climbing tr uh, courses uh, there's events with a panel of judges such as gymnastics and figure skating there's free-for-all video games. What these all have in common is that a lot of participants could potentially um, compete all together at the same venue and they all will get ranked first, second, third, all the way to last place. Now, our goal is to estimate and track the skills of players. And, well, it's relatively easy to compare players' skills when the sport in question has a standardized scoring system. And to give an example, I mean, you might be thinking of standardized testing in uh, academic settings. Um, that, that's a good example. Another one is track races. You know, if you race 10 kilometers in your home country versus your friend racing in their home country, um, it's still a track. It's the same. If, they, if you both run 10 kilometers, you can pretty much directly compare your times and you know who's the better runner. However, in a different sport, such as um, say you're running obstacle courses instead of tracks. Uh, I mean, part of what makes obstacle courses interesting is that every course is different. And so now there's no longer a direct comparison to be made between um, times on one track versus another. 
So, um, and, and this was true in the chess setting as well. So in these settings, how do you compare results between different events? And similar to in chess, the idea is to kind of pay attention to who it is that you beat or and who you lose against. Um, all right, so um, just again, very briefly, uh, these the Bayesian model, it's kind of similar to the other Bayesian systems, such as TrueSkill and Glico. We have a model that factorizes so that the joint probability distribution over all the variables has um, an initial skill prior, which is uh, a distribution, a starting distribution for each player's skill. Then there's a skill evolution model what is this, uh, the distribution over the skill of player i at time t given their skill at the previous time step or the previous contest they participate in s i t minus one there's a performance model so even if you know the player's skill precisely um, their performance on a given day may fluctuate they might have a good day or a bad day and finally the evidence model because we don't actually get to observe this numerical performance value we only get to see this ranking which is which we assume is the total order between um, these performances so um, that means although we don't get to directly observe the performance values we do get to observe whether a player's performance is better or worse than another's at the same event and one of the major insights in our derivation is that um, just due to um, consistency basically the model is identifiable so if you have uh, a large enough number of participants then the evidence um, obtained through the rankings is actually enough to pretty much infer the performance value so it's, even though we don't actually observe the numerical values of the performances we can pretty much infer them so we can use them as if we had observed them and this allows us to simplify quite a bit and uh, so as a result, we get a much simpler algorithm than true skill. And it's also, it turns out it's a lot more scalable. It can handle much bigger games. It's also extensible. For example, we can change the performance model if we believe that uh, the this particular sport requires it. And the fact that it's simple means that we can prove some nice properties. For example, we, know, we now know that unlike Glico 2 and Top Coder, ELO MMR is indeed incentive compatible. It's also robust by using a heavy tailed performance model, such as the logistic distribution. It turns out that just following the Bayesian math, we get a system in which if you perform uh, really well one day or really badly, um, let's say you have the worst off day possible. For example, you're doing an online competition and your Wi-Fi shuts off. So you just, you know, maybe normally you're a very strong contestant, but today you're last place because of an injury, because of your Wi-Fi cutting off, whatever. Well, in our system, there's a finite bound on how many rating points you can lose in one contest, which is not true for a lot of these other systems. Uh, our system is also extremely fast. It's asymptotically almost linear time in the number of contestants and is highly parallelizable. Empirically, we see these uh, these findings kind of manifest as well. We see that our system makes more accurate predictions than these rival systems, and it's extremely fast. For example, uh, CodeForces is a leading programming contest platform with hundreds of thousands of rated users, and we were able to process its entire history, which spans 11 years now, in, and we process all of it in less than a minute on one machine. Um, so, um, finally, I'd like to highlight some real-world use. Uh, of course, this system is brand new, and we look forward to it seeing much more applications that maybe you guys will come up with. But, uh, you know, one startup, AI Crowd, has already, um, is already in talks with us and wants to use ELO MMR to rate its users for its machine learning competitions. In addition, we've set up our own website, worldrank.org, um, the front end by Benny Lin, so you can kind of see visualizations of ratings over time. Okay, thank you so much for coming to our talk.